Good evening and welcome. Tonight, I am honored to introduce myself as Sleep Scribe. My purpose is simple yet profound to guide you on a journey to a restful and rejuvenating night's sleep. Through the timeless magic of fairy tales and the gentle embrace of soothing sounds, I'm here to lead you to a sanctuary of tranquility. Today, I am delighted to share with you the captivating tale of Kung Fu Panda 3. In this thrilling adventure, we witness the return of our beloved dragon warrior, Po, as he faces his greatest challenge yet. As the peaceful Valley of Peace comes under threat from the formidable General Kai, Po must embark on a journey of self-discovery and mastery to protect all he holds dear. Guided by the wisdom of his mentors and the unexpected reunion with his long-lost father, Po learns the ancient art of Qi, unlocking powers beyond his imagination. With the fate of Kung Fu hanging in the balance, Po and his friends unite to confront Kai and his army of jade zombies in an epic showdown. Begin by finding a comfortable position in your bed, allowing your body to sink into the mattress and your muscles to relax. Close your eyes gently and bring your awareness to your breath. Inhale deeply, counting to four, and exhale slowly, counting to five, releasing any tension with each breath. Continue this rhythmic breathing pattern, inhaling for four counts and exhaling for six, allowing yourself to sink deeper into relaxation with each breath. As you feel more at ease, gradually extend your exhalation Inhaling for four counts, and exhaling for seven, then eight. If you encounter any discomfort or breathlessness, simply return to the previous count without forcing it, allowing yourself to find your own natural rhythm. As you continue this meditation, allow your breath to return to its natural pace, observing the sensation of each inhale and exhale without trying to control it. Stay present in the moment, focusing your attention on the flow of your breath and the gentle rise and fall of your chest. If your mind begins to wander, gently guide it back to the rhythm of your breathing, acknowledging any thoughts or distractions without judgment. Allow yourself to let go of any worries or stress, embracing the stillness and tranquility of the present moment. By incorporating these calming meditation techniques into your bedtime routine, you can cultivate a sense of inner peace and relaxation that prepares your mind and body for a restful night's sleep. Chapter 1. Battle in the Spirit Realm Master Ugwe sat on top of a mountain, floating among the white, fluffy clouds of the Spirit Realm, peacefully meditating with his eyes closed. Peach blossom petals fell from above and landed on his face, tickling his nose. Inner peace, inner peace, itchy nose, he chanted, sneezing the petal away. Inner peace, Two curved blades made of jade, each one attached to a chain, suddenly whizzed through the air toward him. Without opening his eyes, Ugwe quickly grabbed the nearest one and sent it flying into the other blade, knocking them both down. Ugwe opened his eyes to see a massive, muscled yak coming through the clouds toward him, his whole body glowing green with energy. His head was crowned by two huge horns, 
His black mane hung down his back, and the chains of his blade weapons were wrapped around his wrists. Kai, old friend, Ugwe calmly greeted him. Master Ugwe, said Kai, his voice as dark and deep as the look in his eyes. Our battle ended five hundred years ago, said Ugwe. Kai's angry eyes blazed. Well, now I'm ready for a rematch. He launched himself through the air at Ugwe, slicing through the mountain to reach the tortoise. Chunks of the mountain floated away. Yeah, he cried. He sent the two blades hurtling through the air once more. This time, Ugwe leapt out of the way, swiftly dodging them. You've grown stronger, Ugwe remarked. He quickly moved his hands, and the shape of a glowing Chinese symbol appeared in the air in front of him. The symbol flew toward Kai, knocking him down. But Kai jumped right back up. After 500 years in the spirit realm, you pick up a thing or two, Kai explained, with the hint of a grin on his face. He looked down at the belt around his waist. Several jade amulets dangled from it. Ugwe stared at the amulets, recognizing the animal shapes of his former students, who had ascended into the spirit realm. What terrible thing had Kai done? I have taken the chai of every master here, and soon I will have your power too, he boasted. When will you realize, Ugwe said calmly, the more you take, the less you have. Kai launched his chain blades once again, they latched on to floating chunks of mountain. Then he hurled the heavy chunks at Ugwe. Ugwe moved his hands again, creating a shield in the air, shaped like a yin and yang symbol. Smash! The chunks of mountain shattered the shield into pieces. The impact sent Ugwe flying back as Kai's chains wrapped around him. Kai pulled Ugwe closer to him, then Kai began to pull the green chai out of Ugwe's body. As the energy left him, Ugwe slowly turned to Jade. With your chi, I will finally be able to return to the mortal world, Kai said. And this time, you won't be there to stop me. Ah, it was never my destiny to stop you. I have set another on that path, Ugwe promised. Then the old master shriveled and shrank, until all that was left of him was a small jade amulet. Kai hung it from a cord around his neck, instead of his belt. Everyone would see what he had done to the great Ugwe. Kai grinned at the amulet. Then I will find him, and take his chai too. Kai let loose a wave of green chi, which enveloped him. A portal opened up between the spirit realm and the mortal realm which took Kai all the way down to Earth. Chapter 2 Poe the Teacher The sun slowly rose over the Jade Palace, which sat high on a mountaintop overlooking the Valley of Peace. Every morning, when the villagers in the valley woke up, they looked at the palace and knew they were safe. For inside lived the best kung fu fighters in the land. Master Shifu, their leader. Tigress, Mantis, Monkey, Viper, and Crane, the Furious Five. And the dragon warrior himself, the mighty panda called Po. That morning, Po exploded through the doors of the bunkhouse. Justice. The most important meal of the day, he cried as he bounded down the mountain toward the village. The Furious Five followed him. Tigress moved with agile grace. Monkey propelled himself with his long arms. Mantis hopped with amazing speed. Viper's body smoothly glided down the rocks. And Crane soared above them all. They landed awesomely in front of Mr. Ping's noodle shop. Let's have, um, two spring rolls, Poe began, placing their order. Three, Monkey cut in. 
spicy tofu bun, added Crane. The spicy noodle soup for Tigress, Poe put in. Did you want extra sauce for that? She wants it on the side, Monkey said. On the side, Tigress confirmed, crossing her arms. Once they had their lunch, Poe and the Furious Five ran through the valley once again as villagers called from windows and gathered on the streets. Go, dragon warrior, they cheered. Defend our valley. Poe and the Five sprinted and jumped, darting between their adoring fans. Then Poe led them back up the mountain. Yee-ha, Poe cheered, striking a dramatic kung fu pose as he landed back outside the Jade Palace. But looking around, he saw the others weren't posing with him. You guys aren't doing the dramatic pose, are you? I'm doing the dramatic slouch, Crane said. You guys never underestimate the power of the dramatic entrance, Poe told them. I've heard of some masters who could win a fight just by throwing open a door. Shusha. He moved to kick open the door of the training hall when Master Shifu stepped in front of him. Dramatic entrance, Master Shifu asked, raising an eyebrow. A red panda, Master Shifu barely came up to Poe's waist, but he could topple the big panda with just one look. Master Shifu, I, uh, Poe began, embarrassed. The dragon warrior is correct, Master Shifu interrupted, surprising Poe. Before the battle of the fist comes the battle of the mind. Hence, the dramatic entrance. Master Shifu turned and leaped through the doors to the training hall. Rows of crossbow-wielding geese fired flaming arrows, lighting the cauldrons that lined the hall. Poof! They exploded into flames. Whoa, nice dramatic entrance, said Poe impressed. What's the occasion? Today will be my final class, Master Shifu replied. Your final... Wait, I didn't even know you were sick, Poe said. Although you have been looking a little... I'm not sick, Master Shifu protested. Healthy. A little healthy. A lot, actually, Poe said, trying to recover. Master Shifu took a deep breath. My final class. Because from now on, your training will be in the hands of the Dragon Warrior. The Furious Five looked at Master Shifu like he was crazy. What? Poe shouted once he realized what Master Shifu had said. He leaned over and whispered loudly into Master Shifu's ear. Me? Teach? I mean, why not Tigress? She's always telling everyone what to do. Be quiet, Poe, Tigress commanded. See what I mean? Poe asked. Tigress is not the dragon warrior. You are, Master Shifu replied firmly. A feeling of panic started to well inside Poe. Before he became the Dragon Warrior, he was just a humble noodle shop server who looked up to the Furious Five as his heroes. Then, Master Shifu had taught him how to harness his inner strength to perform feats of amazing awesomeness, and he had become a kung fu hero too, fighting evil bad guys. That came easy to him now. A teaching... Come on, they're the five, Poe said. What could I teach them? There is always something more to learn, even for a master, Master Shifu replied. For instance, let me show you another move, the dramatic exit. Master Shifu pointed his staff across the hall. What's that? he cried. Poe and the Furious Five turned to look, and when they turned back, Master Shifu was gone. Where'd he go? Poe asked. Then he noticed that the Furious Five were all standing at attention. Master, they said, bowing to Poe. We await your instructions, Master, Crane said. All you have to lose is our respect, Tigress said, her golden eyes fixed on him. Poe gulped. How could he possibly teach the Furious Five? But he had to try. Master Shifu had asked him to do it. Mantis turned to Poe, hopefully. Seriously, how bad can it be? A few minutes later, 
Mantis had his answer. Very bad. Very, very bad. The training hall was set up like an extreme obstacle course. Sharp blades, when set in motion, swung like pendulums. Arrows whizzed across the hall at unexpected moments. Flames shot up, as if out of nowhere. Poe was nervously calling out commands from Master Shifu's seat as the Furious Five jumped and flew through the course. Monkey, immovable mountain stance, he yelled. Yes, Master, Monkey replied. He froze atop one of the training hall machines, motionless, until... Crunch! Monkey fell into the gears of the machine. Uh, I mean... Bo turned to the other four. Tigress, tornado backflip. Yes, Master, Tigress said dutifully. She flipped backward, right into a giant swinging ball of fire. Oh, fire! Poe cried in alarm. Fire! repeated the crossbow-wielding geese. The geese shot their arrows at Tigress. Sorry, Poe yelled as one hit her in the butt. Crane, go high, I mean, low, oh! Crane swooped high and then dipped low, just as Viper was speeding past. She clotheslined him, and he landed on Tiny Mantis. Ah, my claw thingy, Mantis cried. Poe tried to make things better by shouting more commands. Totem pole poison technique. Swarming insect bite with yellow tail. Yellow jacket. Spicy. Oof! Ow! Ouch! The cries of the Furious Five rang through the palace as Poe's directions, causing them to crash into obstacles and into one another. Exhausted and beaten up, the Furious Five fell into a tangled heap on the training room floor. Good job, Poe, Viper groaned, trying to be encouraging. Did you at least learn a little something? Poe asked, wincing. Yes, Tigress said. I learned that you can't teach. And that Tigress is flammable, Crane added. Poe's face fell. Then the roof of the training hall fell too. Chapter 3 The Power of Chi That evening, Poe walked sadly through the sculpture garden. He saw a few of the palace geese pass by, and he hid. I'm glad we're not Poe right now, said one of the geese. What a loser, said another. What was Shifu thinking? What was Ugwe thinking? Then they noticed Poe hiding beside them. I think he heard us one of the guards said. I didn't hear anything, Poe replied, coming out of his hiding spot. He said you're a loser, the first guard said, toddling off with the others. Poe looked up at the statue of Ugwe, the elderly tortoise who had been the senior master of the Jade Palace before Master Shifu. It was Ugwe who had named Poe the Dragon Warrior, shortly before he ascended into the spirit realm. Sorry, Ugwe, Poe said to the statue. He sighed, then turned to go and ran into Master Shifu. Ah, Poe cried. Would you stop doing that? How was your first day teaching? Master Shifu asked. Humiliating. I heard. Who told you? Did Tigress tell you? I heard. The roof collapse. The cries of pain. And Tigress told me. Yeah, well. Did she also tell you that it'll never happen again? Oh, snap. Because I am done. Teaching? You're being humiliated, Shifu asked. Both. I don't know why you ever thought I could teach that class. Shifu looked at Poe calmly. If you only do what you can do, you will never be more than you are now. I don't want to be more, Poe cried. I like who I am. Shifu shook his head. You don't even know who you are. Of course I do, Poe said. I'm the dragon warrior. And what exactly does that mean, dragon warrior? It means, you know, just going around and punching and kicking. Defending the valley and stuff. Punching and kicking? 
You think that is what the great master Ugwe saw for you? A 500-year-old prophesy fulfilled, so you could spend your days kicking butt and running through the town high-fiving bunnies. Yes, answered Poe in a tiny voice. No, Shifu said firmly. Ugwe saw greatness in you, Poe, against my better judgment. More than you can see in yourself. Incredible power awaits you. Power beyond anything you can imagine. Master Shifu stood up and began a series of slow, practiced movements. As he moved, a golden light began to gather in his hands. He brought his hands together and then directed the flowing energy to a tiny flower bud at the base of the Ugwe statue. The bud immediately opened to reveal a beautiful flower. Poe stared at him in wonder. Whoa, what was that? That was Chi. Whoa, what's Chai? Poe asked. The energy that flows through all living things, Master Shifu explained. Poe's eyes widened. So, you're saying if I teach, I'll be able to do cool stuff like that? No, I'm saying if you teach, then I'll be able to do cool stuff like that, Master Shifu replied. Mastering Chai requires mastery of self. Ukwe sat alone in a cave for 30 years, asking one question. Who am I? I'm lucky if I get five minutes before you interrupt. Oh, so now I have to sit alone in a cave for 30 years? Poe whined. Eventually. After you master teaching, Master Shifu said. Teaching? Poe asked. There's no way I'm ever going to be like you. I'm not trying to turn you into me, Master Shifu said. I'm trying to turn you into you. He plucked the flower, handed it to Poe, and walked off. Poe was more confused than before. Turn me into me? Wait a second, that makes no... He called after Master Shifu. Almost there, Shifu. Just a little more confusing, and you'll be the next Ugwe. Poe looked up at the Ugwe statue. Oh, sorry. No offense, Master Ugwe, he said. I'll let you get back to your eternal peace. Chapter 4 A Stranger in the Valley Kaboom! A chi portal split open, carving a massive crater into the ground. Kai emerged from the glowing green portal, his eyes blazing with chi energy. He had landed in a field being farmed by a rabbit and a goose. He shot out his blades to keep the farmers from fleeing. Terrified by the sight of Kai, the goose laid an egg. What is this place? Kai asked. Uh, my brother's farm? The rabbit ventured. Ah, Kai nodded. If I stepped on you, would you die? The frightened goose dropped a few more eggs. Yes, the rabbit replied nervously. Kai grinned. The mortal realm. He had returned, finally, after 500 years. He looked down at the Ugwe amulet around his neck. You hear that, Ugwe? I'm back, he said. He raised his muscled arms in the air. Kai has returned. The rabbit and the goose looked blankly at each other. Who? asked the rabbit. Kai, General Kai, Supreme Warlord of all China, Kai said. The two farmers shrugged. The Jade Slayer, Master of Pain. You may know me as the Beast of Vengeance. Maker of Widows? Kai tried. The goose shook his head. Kai sighed. Okay, I used to work with Ugwe. The rabbit and goose lit up. Oh, Master Ugwe. Now he was a great warrior said the rabbit. The goose nodded. Everyone knows Master Ugwe, the wise and mighty. Okay, enough, Kai said. He took several amulets from his belt and tossed them onto the ground. They transformed into kung fu masters made of jade. Find Ugwe's students and bring them to me, Kai ordered. The 
Jade Masters, now under Kai's control, ran off. Kai lifted up Ugwe's amulet. By the time I am done with them, Ugwe, there will be no one left who will even remember your name. Kai is coming. Ghostly green chi illuminated Kai's face as the rabbit and goose shivered with fear. That same night, Poe visited his dad's noodle shop. Mr. Ping was a goose who had adopted Poe when he was just a baby. Through the years, he always made sure the growing panda had plenty of noodles and dumplings to eat. And he was always a good listener when Poe was sad or worried. Poe was taking a bath with his kung fu action figures in a big wooden tub in the alley behind the noodle shop. Teach me? Oh no, it's the dragon teacher, he made one action figure say. Class is in session, what are ye? he said with another. Suddenly, Mr. Ping burst into the alley. Poe jumped in surprise. Oh hey, Dad, what's up? I was just stopping by for a little soak, he said, hiding the figurines underwater. Okay, what's wrong? Mr. Ping asked. Nothing, Poe lied. He casually shook some bath salts into the tub. Nothing. I come home to find you taking a bath with your dolls. Action figures, Poe corrected him. And instead of adding bath salts to the water, you just added Sequan peppercorns, Mr. Ping informed him. Poe yelped, Sichuan, oh my tenders, hot. He quickly poured some cool water into the bath and sighed. Okay, yes, something's wrong, Poe admitted. There, there, son. Tell your daddy all about it, said Mr. Ping gently, as he grabbed a scrub brush and began scrubbing under Poe's arm. Lift your arm. Poe launched into his problem. Shifu says, I don't know what it means to be the dragon warrior. And now, I have to be a teacher? I thought I finally knew who I was. If I'm not the dragon warrior, who am I? There was a heavy silence until his dad broke in. A teacher? Teaching Kung Fu? Po, oh, that's a promotion. Take the job, son. And someday, when you're in charge of the whole Jade Palace, I can sell noodles in the lobby. Woo-hoo. He turned back to Poe. Why are you still here taking a bath like a baby? Get out. Get up. Go, go, go. Franchise expansion awaits us. Mr. Ping hoisted Poe out of the tub and began to towel him off. But what about the Dragon Warrior Dumpling Eating Contest? I have to defend my title, Poe reminded him. No one's going to beat your dumpling eating record, Mr. Ping assured him. A pig poked his head into the alley. Someone's about to beat your dumpling eating record, he cried. Poe and Mr. Ping looked at each other in disbelief. They hurried into the restaurant. A crowd of villagers was gathered around someone and cheering, but Poe couldn't see who was eating the dumplings. Go! 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 The pigs and rabbits chanted. Who's eating my dumplings? Poe demanded. And who's paying for them? Asked Mr. Ping. They pushed through the crowd to see the back of a huge, vaguely familiar figure leaning over a table. He was picking up dumplings and stuffing them into his mouth faster than Poe had ever thought possible. 101, 102, the villagers counted. The big stranger pounded his fist on the table. Then he leaped up and turned, his arms raised in triumph. 103, yeah, he cried, his mouth full of dumpling. Poe and Mr. Ping gasped. The stranger was a panda. A panda taller than Poe and almost twice as wide. Poe was stunned. When he was just a baby, his village had been attacked. Poe's mother had made sure he was safe. Poe believed he was the only survivor. No other panda had ever been seen in the valley for years. Who are you? Poe asked. The stranger held up a finger, pounded his chest 
and then swallowed his last bite of dumpling. I'm Lee Shan. I'm looking for my son, he said. Everyone gasped. The villagers all looked at Poe. Mr. Ping looked at Poe. You lost your son? Poe asked. Lee nodded. Yes, many years ago. I lost my father, Poe said. I'm very sorry, said Lee. Thank you, said Poe. Well, good luck to you, said Lee. You too, said Poe. I hope you find your son. And I hope you find your father. Poe and Lee both turned to walk away. The bunnies and pigs shook their heads. The villagers looked back and forth from Poe to Lee. How could these two pandas not see the truth? Then the two pandas stopped. Poe looked at Lee's green eyes and his big belly and furry feet. Lee did the same thing. Son? asked Lee. Huh? Poe asked, still not quite getting it. Lee's eyes lit up. Oh my gosh, it is you, Poe gasped. He finally realized it. Lee was his long-lost father. Well, don't just stand there. Give your old man a hug, Lee cried. Poe ran forward and threw himself into Lee's arms. His father squeezed him in a big panda bear hug. Mr. Ping watched them, his beak open in shock. The Poe action figure he was holding fell from his hand and clattered to the floor. I can't believe you're alive, Poe said. I thought I'd lost you forever, little Lotus, said Lee. Holding back tears, Poe backed out of the hug. Oh, okay. This is very embarrassing, but I think you've got me confused with a panda named Lotus. My name is Poe. Lee nodded. Oh, right. You wouldn't? Little Lotus was the name you were given at birth. Really? asked Poe. There was nothing little about Poe at all. Or flowery, for that matter. Lee knew what his son was thinking. He laughed. Really? Poe shook his head. I can't believe it. After all these years? And you're really here? This is amazing. Poe turned to Mr. Ping. Hey, Dad. Come say hi to... He stopped. Mr. Ping was his dad, but Lee was his dad too, right? He turned to Lee. Um, Poe began. I don't know what I'm supposed to call you. I'm pretty sure he said his name was Lee, Mr. Ping said. There was a hint of suspicion in his voice. Lee pointed at Mr. Ping. You, come here, Lee ordered in a booming voice. Mr. Ping started to back away. But Lee scooped him up in a hug. Thank you. Thank you for taking such good care of my son. Mr. Ping squirmed out of his grasp. Your son? Now hold on just a minute. He looked at Poe. How do we know this stranger is even related to you? Poe wasn't paying attention. He stood next to Lee, and the two pandas were jiggling their massive bellies. Look at that. Our bellies could be brothers, Lee said proudly. Hey, son, let me teach you how to belly gong. He bumped bellies with Poe, and both bellies began to bounce and wiggle. Belly gong, Lee cried. Poe laughed. That's so cool. They jiggle the same. It's like looking in a fat mirror, Lee agreed. Poe pulled the village sketch artist from the crowd and asked him to draw the two of them. I can't believe we're taking a picture together, Poe said excitedly. But when the artist handed them the sketch, Mr. Ping had sketch-bombed them. But I still don't understand, Mr. Ping interrupted. I thought Poe was the only panda left. No, there's a whole bunch of us, Lee told him. Where, Poe asked excitement rising in his voice. Lee bent down and whispered, a secret panda village in the mountain. Whoa, said Poe. But how did you know where I was? I received a message that led me here, Lee replied. The villagers began to gather around them. Everyone wanted to hear Lee's story. Mr. Ping's eyes narrowed. How could you receive a message if no one could find you? sounds suspicious to me. The villagers nodded, and all eyes turned to Lee. 
It was a message from the universe, Lee said. Ooh, said the villagers. Whoa, said Poe. Rats, muttered Mr. Ping. Now, what's all this about a dragon warrior? Lee asked. How'd you know I was the dragon warrior? Poe asked. Did the universe tell you that too? No, the poster did, Lee replied, pointing to the restaurant walls. Colorful posters selling dragon warrior tofu. And dragon warrior spicy noodles decorated them. And the gift shop. I bought a cup, Lee said, holding up a tea mug with Poe's face on it. Poe grinned. There's so much to show you. You're going to be so awesomely proud. Come on. Come on. He grabbed Lee's paw and dragged him outside the restaurant. Mr. Ping watched them go. A bunny Poe action figure he had dropped and handed it back to him. Mr. Ping stared at it. I'm already awesomely proud, he mumbled sadly. Chapter 5 The Hall of Heroes Poe led his father to the Jade Palace. They slowly climbed the countless steps going up the mountain. Couple more steps, Poe said, panting. Give me a minute, Lee panted along with him. Feeling the burn, Poe admitted. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? Dad, you're going to love this. It's like the coolest thing ever. When they finally reached the top of the mountain, Poe swung open the massive doors of the Jade Palace. The only light in the room came from an altar lit with candles. They illuminated a smooth jade floor. Tall jade columns carved with dragons lined both sides of the hall. And between the columns were wood pillars topped with beautiful, mysterious objects. This is the Hall of Heroes, he explained, home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts in all of China. Whoa, Lee exclaimed. This place is awesome. You were going to say awesome, right? Because it totally is, Po said. Totally, Lee agreed. But be super careful, Po warned. Everything is very fragile here. Poe pointed to a beautiful urn with handles shaped like dragons. Like the urn of whispering warriors. Um, someone broke that once. Who? asked Lee. Poe looked up at the ceiling. Some idiot. He rushed to a suit of rhino armor. Lee was impressed. Wow, this is master flying rhino's battle armor, Poe explained. I wonder if I could fit in that, said Lee. Get out of my head, Dad. I've wondered the same thing. If I could fit in it, Lee asked. If you could? No. If I could fit, Poe replied. Oh, said Lee. Poe grabbed him by the hand again and dragged him from one treasure to another. He stopped in front of a row of tiny helmets. Dad, look at this. The battle helmets of Master Rat's army, Poe said. Then he ran to dolphin-shaped armor mounted on the wall. This is my favorite, Master Dolphin's waterproof armor. Poe ran to a beautifully carved two-wheeled wagon with handles. Check it out. It's the legendary battle rickshaw of Emperor Hawk. Lee appeared behind Poe, wearing Master Flying Rhino's armor. Sweet ride, he remarked. Poe saw him and jumped back. Dad... What are you doing? We're not supposed to touch anything, Poe reminded him. Oh, sorry, sorry, Lee said. Should I put it back? Yeah, you probably should, Poe said. But still, he couldn't help geeking out. He looks so cool, though. How does it feel? Do the hinges hinge? Does it smell like rhino? Does it feel like you can take on a thousand warriors and emerge unscathed? Lee nodded. Yeah, it's pretty cool. He noticed a pull string on the armor. Ooh, I wonder what this does. I should pull it. 
he pulled the string, and the armor started to expand. Wings, shields, and weapons popped out from every inch of the metal suit. In the end, a battle flag sprouted from the top of the helmet. Poe gasped. I think I just peed a little. Lee smiled at his son. The two of them turned and looked at the items in the hall like kids in a candy store. Anything else we should try in here, son? Hmm? Lee asked. Poe grinned at him, and the two started playing with everything in sight. They put rat helmets on their fingers and had a thumb war. They jumped on shields belly first and slid across the smooth floor like they were snow sledding. Poe put on the dolphin armor, and he and his dad had mock battle. Poe was having such a good time, he barely noticed when Master Shifu and the Furious Five walked in. But as soon as he did, he froze, mortified. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Lee was teasing, playfully headbutting Poe with his armored rhino horn. Shh, stop, Poe whispered. Why? What's wrong? Lee asked. Poe bounded toward his friends, grinning sheepishly. Guys, guys, you're never going to guess who just showed up, not in a million years. Lee lifted up the front of his helmet, revealing his panda face. Your father, cried Master Shifu and the Furious Five. Whoa, how'd you guess that? Poe asked. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, of course. We look exactly the same. Dad, say hi to my friends, Mantis, Tigress, Monkey, Crane, and Viper. They're kind of my best friends. Then he pointed to Master Shifu. And this, this is Master Shifu, legend. It is an honor to meet you, Master Panda, Master Shifu said. He looked at Po. Perhaps your father would care to join us in the training hall? He turned back to Lee. Your son will be teaching the class. Each member of the Furious Five winced at the thought of Poe teaching again. Ho, ho, cried Lee, obviously impressed. Poe thought quickly. The last thing he wanted was for his dad to see what a terrible teacher he was. I'm sure he's tired, Poe said. I'm going to show him to the chrysanthemum suite. Poe grabbed his dad by the arm and dragged him away. What? Tired? No, I'm fine, Lee protested. I would love to watch you teach. Trust me, Poe said. It'd be much more fun to watch me. Suddenly, a warning gong sounded, echoing through the hall. Fight, Poe finished. The valley's under attack, Tigress cried. She raced off, followed by the rest of the five and Master Shifu. Poe moved to go with them. Lee held him back. Son? Under attack? He asked worriedly. This is perfect, said Poe. Now you can see what being the dragon warrior is all about. Follow me. Chapter 6 Jombies Attack when Poe and Lee reached the village, Master Shifu and the Furious Five were on the rooftops, already locked in battle. Their opponents were green and glowing. They didn't know it yet, but they were facing Kai's jade creatures, the Kung Fu masters now under the evil Yak's control. Poe leaped through the air. Enemies of justice, prepare for... Poe began... The sight of the glowing jade zombies broke his focus. He botched his landing and fell hard onto the rooftop. What's the deal with the green guys? He asked, shaking off the fall. Tigris punched one of the warriors and grimaced. It was like hitting solid rock. Ah, she cried. Some kind of jade zombies. Monkey landed near Poe. Jade zombies, Poe repeated. Then he and Monkey had the same thought at the same time. Jombies! They yelled together. Jinx! Lee rushed up, panting, and called up to the rooftop. Lotus! Be careful! It's okay, Dad. I do this every... 
a green warrior lunged at him, and Poe fended off the blow with a swift movement of his hands. A second warrior, identical to the first, attacked him on his other side. Whoa! I recognize these guys, Poe cried. The Master Badger twins! With their crushing double gong technique, the two jombie badgers crashed into him from either side, hitting him square in the head. Yeah, that's the one, Poe yelled, pushing them both away. Then he noticed something else strange. That guy is... No! Master Porcupine! The spiky jombie launched one of his sharp darts at Poe, and Monkey flew in to deflect it. I thought he died a hundred years ago, Monkey said. He threw the dart back at the porcupine, and it smashed in bits on contact. These guys are legend, Poe said excitedly. He reached down from the roof and plucked the village sketch artist from the crowd. Get a quick sketch of us, he said, as he hurled himself back into the battle. The little pig quickly sketched Poe, who smiled and posed between delivering punches. Did you get it? Did you get it? Poe asked. He rushed over to the pig and looked at the sketch. Ah, I blinked. Can we get another one? Whoosh! Master Porcupine hurled himself at Poe, and they both tumbled over the roof. They crashed through the ceiling of the back room of the noodle shop, Poe's old bedroom. The jombie wrapped his hands around Poe's neck as they fell. I'm being choked by Master Porcupine. This is so cool, Poe said. He grabbed his Master Porcupine action figure off his shelf. Look, it's you! Master Shifu jumped into the room and knocked Master Porcupine off Poe. Poe, focus, he warned. Poe went flying backward and crashed through the floor and down into Mr. Ping's kitchen. Sorry, Dad. I'll clean it up later, Poe said, scrambling to his feet as two jombie warriors appeared and attacked him. He grabbed the nearest weapon he could find, a frying pan. Whoa, whoa, not my good pan, cried Mr. Ping. Take this one. He took the pan from Poe's hand and replaced it with a soup ladle. Poe used it to fight off the warriors as best as he could. Lee ran into the kitchen. Watch out, he yelled, and just in time. One of the jombies was about to deliver a crushing blow to Poe's head. Poe ducked it. Then he got a gleam in his eye. Check out my dumplings of doom, he cried, and Viper and Tigress appeared to help. Poe snatched some bowls, soared through the air, and smashed down on a table full of dumplings. As the dumplings shot into the air, Poe caught them into the bowls and then poured them into his mouth. Viper wrapped around Poe's belly, and Tigress yanked on Viper, sending the dumplings blasting out of Poe's mouth at rocket speed. Bam, bam, bam! The dumplings knocked down the warriors each time they made contact. Mantis, Crane, and Monkey showed up, and together with Poe, the Furious Five pinned the jombies to the floor. Gotcha, Poe said. Suddenly, all of the jade creatures began to speak at once. Kai was speaking through them. He could speak through their mouths and see the battle through their eyes. And what he saw was that Poe's green chi glowed brighter and stronger than everyone else's. I see you, the jombie said in a spooky voice. Your chi will soon be mine. You talking to me? Poe asked. Which one? asked Tigress. They're all talking. Wow, you're right, said Poe. That's so scary. We should try that too. Maybe it'd be scary back at them. Okay, Mantis agreed. We gotta plan what we're gonna say first or else it won't be scary. It'll just be stupid. It's not them talking, you idiots, yelled the jombies. It's me talking through them. Kai. Who? asked Poe and the Furious Five in unison. Kai frowned. Okay, okay, enough, he said through the jombies. Suddenly, 
the jombies vaporized into green streaks and flew away, up and over the rooftops. Whoa! What just happened? asked Monkey. Did you see that? Poe asked. They just... The green smoke just poof. And they poof. Shifu. What was that? Master Shifu looked thoughtful. Kai. Kai. Nope. Never heard of him. Chapter 7 Ugwe's Tale Everyone returned to the Jade Palace, including Mr. Ping and Lee. They all gathered in the scroll room as Master Shifu searched the overflowing shelves to find the scroll he was looking for. Kai, Kai, where is it? Master Shifu muttered. There's so much wisdom in here, I can't find anything. After a few more minutes, he let out a triumphant cry. Yes. He pulled a scroll off a high shelf and jumped down to join the others. Behold, all the answers will be found within, he said solemnly. He unrolled the scroll, and it was blank. What? Are you kidding me? Not again, he fumed. Then he unraveled some more. Wait, wait, sorry. Oh, okay, here we go. It is written in Ugwe's hand. They all gathered around as Master Shifu read from the scroll. Long ago, I had a brother in arms. I was an ambitious young warrior leading a great army. And fighting by my side was Kai, a closest friend. One day, we were ambushed. I was badly wounded. My friend carried me for days, looking for help, until we came upon a secret village, high in the mountains. An ancient place of healing, a village of pandas. Everyone gasped and looked at Poe. Pandas? Poe said, looking down to the scroll, where there was a sketch of a group of pandas surrounding Ugwe. Master Shifu continued reading. Yes, pandas. The pandas used the power of Chai to heal me. They taught me the power to give Chi. But Kai wanted the power all to himself. He saw that what could be given could also be taken. The scroll showed a terrifying image of Kai sucking Chi from the one of the pandas. I had to stop him. Our battle shook the earth. Until finally, I banished Kai to the spirit realm. Should he ever return to the mortal realm, he can only be stopped by a true master of Chi. Everyone stared at Master Shifu. Me? I can barely make a flower bloom. I'd need at least 30 more years. And a cave, Master Shifu protested. Crane anxiously flapped his wings. Chi Master. We need a Chi Master. He will continue stealing the Chai of Masters until he has consumed it all, Viper said. There is no choice. We fight, Tiger said firmly. Poe looked at the scroll, at the drawing of pandas huddled around Ugwe as the five continued to talk. Li looked from Po, to Master Shifu, to the Furious Five, their faces frowning as they struggled to come up with a plan. Then Li stepped forward. I can teach you, son, he said. Po looked up at his father. You can do this? Of course, Li replied. I'm a panda. That must be why the universe sent you here, Po guessed. Okay, so what do I have to do? You have to come home with me, said Lee. Poe's eyes widened to the secret village. You must rediscover what it is to be a panda, Lee explained. You have to learn how to live like a panda, sleep like a panda, eat like a panda. Those hundred and three dumplings. I was just warming up. Poe nodded. I've always felt like I wasn't eating up to my full potential. Mr. Ping ran up to Lee. You can't take Poe away from me. No, no. I want a second opinion. Shifu, open another scroll or something. I think he should go, Master Shifu said. Fine, Mr. Ping snapped. A third opinion. Monkey? Tigress? Poe interrupted him. Dad, 
You heard what Shifu said, Ugwe said. This guy can only be stopped by a master of chi. And I can only master chi by knowing who I really am. Well, I'm a panda. Mr. Ping frowned. He couldn't argue with that. Po was a panda. And he deserved to be with other pandas. Even if it broke Mr. Ping's own noodle-loving heart. I'll pack you a lunch for the road, he said. Lee and Po set out for the village at sunrise the next morning. The Furious Five and Master Shifu stood at the top of the Jade Palace steps and watched them go. Do you really think Po can master Chi in time? Viper asked. It doesn't matter what I think, Master Shifu responded. It matters only what the universe thinks. So that's a no? Mantis piped up. Crane looked worried. Master, what are we going to do? You are going to find out where Kai is, Master Shifu replied. Follow the trail of those jade creatures. But do not engage, for with every foe he faces, Kai becomes stronger. Why me? Is it because I ask? Crane wondered. No, said Master Shifu. It is because you can fly. Go! Crane gulped and put on his flat straw hat. Mantis jumped on the brim. Should have kept your beak shut, he told his friend. And take Mantis, Master Shifu added. What? Mantis complained. Oh man, is it because I... Yes, said Master Shifu. So with Mantis perched on his hat, Crane flew off to find Kai and certain danger. Chapter 8. Journey to the Secret Panda Village It was a long way to the panda village. Poe and Lee left the Valley of Peace far behind and walked until they reached a range of snowy mountains. Then they began to climb higher and higher. Gruel! Poe's stomach rumbled from hunger. Lunch break? asked Lee. You don't need to ask me twice, Poe said. He set down his travel sack. Ow, came a voice from within. Poe's eyes narrowed. Dad? Yes, Lee replied, but Poe wasn't talking to Lee. Poe stared at the sack. Dad, he repeated, louder this time, as he opened the sack, revealing Mr. Ping inside. Yes, Mr. Ping answered meekly. He popped his head out. What are you doing? Poe asked. What am I doing? Getting a backache, Mr. Ping complained. Did you have to step on every rock? No, I mean, why are you here? Poe pressed him. What was I supposed to do? Mr. Ping asked. What if the pandas don't have food you like? You're never going to be able to save the world on an empty stomach. I consider my presence mission critical. Well, you know we can't share the location of the village with others, Lee reminded him. You think I can't keep a secret? Mr. Ping shot back. I raised Poe for 20 years before I finally told him he was adopted. Seriously? Lee asked. Poe shrugged sheepishly. Lee gave in. Okay. I guess it would be cruel to make you fly back. Poe stared at Mr. Ping. You can fly? How come you never taught me? They ate a quick meal and then continued through the mountains. The snow was waist deep, but Poe and Lee plodded through it. Mr. Ping's webbed feet allowed him to walk lightly across the surface. We're here, Lee announced suddenly. They had come to a stop in front of a towering wall of ice, its top lost in the snow swirling high overhead. Sure looks like a long way up there, Mr. Ping said. And my son hates stairs, so let's go home. We're pandas, Lee said simply. He pulled a hidden rope, and a wicker basket appeared in the snow below them. Lee grinned. We don't do stairs. Poe's face lit up with joy. I've waited my whole life to hear those words. Rats, said Mr. Ping. They all climbed into the basket, and Lee tugged on the ropes. They were pulled up the side of the ice wall, higher and higher. They rose above the clouds 
and the basket stopped moving. As the mist around them parted, Poe could see more mist. Huh? Poe wondered. This is the secret panda village, Mr. Ping asked. No wonder you keep it a secret. If I lived here, I wouldn't tell anyone either. They climbed out of the basket. Boards creaked under Poe's foot as he stepped out. Were they on some kind of bridge? Lee, Poe, and Mr. Ping walked forward, passing underneath an arch. Now you can woe, he said. The fog cleared, and Poe's eyes widened as he tried to take in the sight before him. The village was nestled among towering, snowy mountains, but the village itself was lush and green. A bubbling stream ran through a bamboo forest, and crystal blue water cascaded down a waterfall. What stunned Poe the most were the pandas. There were so many of them. Adorable panda kids ran through the village, laughing and flying kites. Other pandas snoozed peacefully in hammocks, or played mahjong in the shade, or relaxed in steaming thermal pools. One by one, the pandas noticed Lee, Poe, and Mr. Ping. Lies back, a panda shouted. He's found a son, another added. The pandas let out a cheer and began to run across the green fields toward Poe and Lee. Then they all stopped to catch their breath. In a minute, they were running toward him again. Why are we running? asked a slightly confused, bigger panda. Soon, Poe was surrounded by dozens of pandas. Cute baby pandas stared at him shyly from the safety of their parents' legs. Poe smiled and gave them a friendly wave. Everyone, gather around. This is my son, Lee called out proudly. The pandas swarmed Poe, hugging him and shaking his hand. Easy, easy, Lee laughed. A panda with graying fur stepped forward. This is Grandma Panda. Our village elder, Lee said. Grandma Panda looked Poe up and down. Hmm, he's so handsome, she said, just like his father. Thank you, Mr. Ping said proudly. Lee turned to two massive pandas standing next to him, both wearing eager expressions. Son, these are your cousins, Dim and Sum. I have cousins, Poe said excitedly. Dim hung a lay made of dumplings around Poe's neck. Welcome, he said. Poe looked at the dumpling lie admiringly. Whoa, buns on a string. We call it a snack lace, said some. But just as Poe was about to take a bite, a bunch of pandas swarmed him. At first, Poe thought they were coming in for a group hug until he heard munching noises. When they backed away, the snack lace was just a string. Some shrugged. We'll make you another one, the slightly confused panda, whom Poe learned was named Big Fun, was now teary-eyed. It's you, he cried, squeezing Poe in a tight panda bear hug. Oh, that's nice, Poe managed to squeak out. Hi. I don't know who you are, Big Fun said warmly. A baby panda named Lele reached into Poe's pocket and pulled out a tiger's action figure. Ooh, stripey baby. So beautiful, she said, clapping her hands. Okay, careful with that, Poe said, reaching out to grab it back. Lele looked at Poe with her wide baby eyes. Can I keep her? She asked, hugging the tiger's action figure close. Poe couldn't refuse. No problem, he said. Of course. That's why I brought her. Take good care of her? Yay, stripey baby she cried happily. As Poe looked at Lele, something struck him. You're just like me, but a baby, he said. He looked at Grandma Panda. You're like me, but old, he cried. Grandma Panda grinned. He turned to Dim and Sum. You're like me, but fatter. Dim and Sum high-fived him. Poe gazed out at all the pandas, at all the furry faces and big bellies and tiny ears and black noses. You all look like me, he said softly. A strange feeling welled up inside Poe, one he had never felt before. 
All his life, he had been surrounded by pigs and bunnies and geese. He'd battled alongside a tiger, a monkey, a praying mantis, a crane, and a snake. He'd battled rhinos, gorillas, a leopard, and even a peacock. And always, wherever he went, he had been the only big-bellied, furry, black-and-white guy in sight. For the first time in his life, he fit in. Let's feast in my son's honor, Lee said, motioning downhill. The pandas began flopping to the ground and rolling. Poe was confused. What the? Dim and some plopped down on the ground. They rolled down the hill like furry balls. Pandas don't walk, we roll, Lee explained waving the bow. Soon, every panda in the village was rolling down the hill, expertly dodging logs and rocks on the way down. They all ended up in one big, furry heap at the bottom of the hill. Mr. Ping shook his head. Have you ever seen anyone look so ridiculous? He scoffed. Beside him, Poe plopped onto the grass. Poe, what are you doing? Poe, Mr. Ping yelled. Poe paused. As the dragon warrior, he had jumped, leaped, bounded, raced, zoomed, and flipped. But rolling was a new thing. Then he launched himself down the hill, rolling after his new panda family. Chapter 9. Panda Party Poe wobbled a little bit as he rolled. He hit every obstacle in his path, and he crashed into the banquet table instead of the furry panda pile. But he did it. Poe stood up. You're right. That is better than walking. The pandas cheered. As they headed to the banquet, a little boy named Bao walked up to Poe. What kind of panda doesn't know how to roll? he asked suspiciously. Well, I'm kind of new at this whole being a panda thing, Po replied. The kid turned to Mr. Ping. And what kind of panda are you? I'm not a panda at all. What's that? Bao asked, gesturing to Mr. Ping's head. Mr. Ping shrugged. My hat. Bao gestured to his face. What's that? My beak, Mr. Ping replied. Bao was just starting another question when Mr. Ping shouted, No more questions. All the pandas dug into the food, piled high on the table, grabbing it with their hands. Here, son. I packed your chopsticks, Mr. Ping said, shoving the tools into Poe's hand. Thanks, Dad, Poe said. The other pandas stopped eating and looked at him quizzically. What? Poe asked. What are those for? asked Bao. These? These are chopsticks, Po replied. They're for picking up dumplings. To demonstrate, Po picked up a dumpling between the two sticks. Bao looked surprised. You mean, you only eat one at a time? He picked up a mound of dumplings with his hands and shoved them into his mouth, all at once. As Poe looked around the table, he realized that all the pandas were eating that way. He looked down at his hands. One held the chopsticks and a single dumpling, and the other was empty. He gasped. I knew I wasn't eating up to my potential. Poe grabbed the dumpling out of his chopsticks, tossed them aside, and grabbed a second dumpling with his other hand. Then he shoved them both into his mouth at the same time. Now it was Mr. Ping's turn to gasp. He was horrified. But everyone else cheered. Suddenly, a gong sounded through the village. Everyone stopped eating and turned toward an empty stage just beyond the banquet table. On the stage, four umbrellas were twirling in unison. A beautiful panda walked through them, her face covered by a fan. Poe dropped his dumpling. I am May May, said the panda, locking eyes with Poe from behind her fan. Wow, she's amazing. She's so beautiful, May May said, faking Poe's voice from behind her fan. 
she switched back to her regular voice and batted her long eyelashes. That's sweet, Poe, but please try to save all other compliments until after the performance. Me? Poe said, looking confused. No, I didn't say, shh, shh, shut it, Mei Mei hushed him. After the performance. From his seat, Mr. Ping rolled his eyes. Has it started yet? Mei Mei unfurled a ribbon from each hand and twirled them expertly. With a snap, she whipped a flute into the hands of a nearby panda and then a cymbal to another. They started playing, and she began to dance around the stage. Lee elbowed Poe. Best ribbon dancer in the world. At least, that's what she says. Mei Mei's eyes met Poe's as she danced. Look away, she said. You can't, can you? Poe turned back to Lee. Dad, why does she keep staring at me like that? Try to keep up, Mei Mei said with a wink. She then wrapped Poe in her ribbon, yanking him out of his seat. Heh, I, uh, don't really know how to dance, Poe said. Of course you do. All pandas dance, said Mei Mei. She reeled Poe in closer and dipped him. I know what you're thinking. You do? How can one panda be so beautiful? Poe laughed nervously as Mei Mei whipped him in the other direction. Using her ribbons like puppet strings, she made Poe grab some flowers from offstage and give them to her. For me, she said, puppeting Poe again to kiss her hand. Help me, dads, Poe shouted to Lee and Mr. Ping as Mei Mei twirled him past them. Yeah, no, you're on your own. Lee laughed as Mei Mei reeled him in again. You're doing great, son, Mr. Ping shouted encouragingly. Your turn, Mei Mei said handing Poe a ribbon. But Poe wasn't the most graceful ribbon dancer. He yanked a cymbal out of the hands of the musician and hit himself in the face. Then his feet got tangled in the ribbon and he toppled over with a thud. Mei Mei used her ribbons to yank him back onto his feet before holding him above her head in a final pose. The crowd went wild. Even Mr. Ping couldn't help but cheer. As Mei Mei flung Poe back into his seat, Lee leaned over to him. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of it. I have so much to learn, Poe said. But as the pandas of the village surrounded him, the road ahead felt a little easier. After all, he had loads of good teachers to help him. Chapter 10. Fear the Bug While Poe and Mr. Ping were in the panda village, Mantis and Crane continued their search for Kai and the zombies. Mantis rode on top of Crane's hat as they soared over a desert, stretching for miles in every direction. Wings of surveillance, Crane called out, like it was a special kung fu move. Why do you do that? Mantis complained. Do what? Crane asked. Just because you say wings of... for something doesn't mean that you're doing a special move. It's like me saying antenna of power. Or thorax of making sandwiches. Crane looked up at his friend. Wings of disagreement. Whoa, there! Mantis cried suddenly, pointing down below. Three kung fu masters were making their way across the desert. Master Bear, Master Croc, and Master Chicken. Crane swooped down toward them. Cluck! Jade creatures attacked our villages. We've tracked them here, Master Chicken said. Stop! Master Bear boomed. The group froze. They had arrived at an old abandoned ship in the middle of the desert. A gaping hole opened up into the hull. They must be in there, Master Bear said. Crane frowned. He and Mantis were supposed to be on a scouting mission, not an attacking one. Kai was just too dangerous. Master Shifu 
strongly advises, Crane began, but Master Bear raised his giant battle axes and ran toward the ship with a mighty cry. Yeah, Master Croc followed him. Ooh, wah. Not to engage, Crane finished, but it was too late. We've got to get in there, Mantis urged him. Master Shifu said, Crane repeated. You're seriously afraid? Mantis asked. Even Master Chicken is going in, and he's a chicken. Master Chicken's feathered tail disappeared through the hole in the ship as he followed his friends. Seconds later, a bright green light flashed. The screams of the three Kung Fu masters rang through the desert. That's it. I'm going in, Mantis said, preparing to jump off Crane's hat. Crane didn't like this one bit. Mantis, we have orders not to... They need our help, Mantis interrupted him. Come on, I'll go high, you go low. Mantis leaped up and entered the ship through a small crack in the wood. Crane sighed. It was one thing to leave the other masters behind. But Mantis was his friend. Fear the bug! Crane heard Mantis yell from inside the ship. All right, you little... Uh-oh. Crane didn't hesitate. Hold on, buddy. I'm coming, he cried, flying toward the ship. He could still hear Mantis. Antenna of power! Ah, it didn't work. A large crash came from inside the ship. Then another green light flashed. Mantis! Crane yelled. He dove inside the ship and landed, his wings ready to deliver kung fu punishment to the first jade zombie he saw. He slowly looked into the darkness. Mantis, he called out softly. Mantis? The silence inside the ship was eerie. Crane felt the feathers on the back of his neck prickle. Slowly, he turned and found himself looking up at a big, green, glowing yak warrior. Crane knew it must be Kai. Crane whistled a nervous tune and lowered his hat. But when he tried to walk away casually, Kai lunged. Crane flew up over Kai's head, delivering a kung fu kick to Kai as he moved. Your chai is strong, Kai remarked, just like your friend, a bug. With a smug grin, he put a hand on his belt to show Crane the new amulets that dangled there. Master Bear, Master Croc, Master Chicken, and Mantis. Mantis, Crane cried. Kai took advantage of Crane's moment of weakness. He jumped in the air and pushed his right hand forward, sending a wave of pure chai energy at Crane. The powerful force slammed him against a wall and left him gasping with shock. Don't worry, little birdie, Kai said. I'll put your chai to good use, destroying the Jade Palace and everyone in it. No, Crane yelled. He grabbed the nearest object, a wooden keg, and hurled it at Kai. Then he soared up, crashing through the deck of the boat. Kai launched his chain blades at Crane. They wrapped around Crane's feet and wings. Wings of regret, Crane said. Kai yanked Crane back into the boat. Kai's eyes glowed green with chai, but also with greed. Chapter 11 Panda Training Poe had no idea the danger that his friends were in, but he knew he had one main purpose in the panda village, to learn how to harness his panda nature so he could become a master of chi. Poe jumped out of bed right and early the next morning and went over to the little flower pot in his hut. Inside, it was a little wilted flower, Oh yeah, first day of panda training. All right, flower, I'm going to make you bloom, he cried. He ran outside and across a bridge to Lee's hut. His father was still sleeping, snoring peacefully in a big, comfy bed. Dad, Poe said, but Lee didn't stir. Dad! Lee sat up, startled. What? What is it? I'm ready for my first day of panda training, Poe announced. 
he was practically bouncing off the walls with energy. Well, pandas sleep past noon, Lee grumbled. So lesson number one is go back to bed. Poe headed back to his hut, shaking his head. Of course, he scolded himself. Poe fluffed up his pillow and straightened his blanket. Nobody said this was going to be easy. Then he climbed into bed and fell asleep instantly. Before Poe knew it, Lee burst into his hut. Poe shot upright. Did I oversleep? He asked. You sure did, Lee replied proudly. Yes, Poe cheered. Lee brought Poe into the village, where a bunch of young pandas were lined up, eager to help Poe. Some of the pandas started passing a little cock with feathers called Jianzi back and forth, kicking it or patting it away. The Jianzi flew toward Poe, and he joined in. Bao did a bunch of cool moves, egging Poe on. Can you do this? Can you do that? He said, kicking it forward and under the knee. Finally, Bao kicked the Jianzi to Poe. He caught it with his foot and kicked it high in the air. It soared across the field, to the top of the hill. Poe could see Grandma Panda standing there. Ah, uh oh, Grandma Panda, heads up, Poe yelled. Hello, she called. Then, do H. The Jianzi nailed her on the head, knocking her down. We better roll, Lee said, and they all quickly rolled off. Poe was grateful that it was time for rolling practice. He, Lee, and the young pandas lined up on top of the hill when Poe spotted Mr. Ping halfway down, holding a big bowl of noodles. Poe, lunchtime, he called up to his son. Poe had already started rolling down the hill with the other pandas. Ah, cried Mr. Ping as he darted between the rolling pandas. Poe continued to hurl himself down the hill, once again hitting every rock and tree in his path. When he reached the bottom, he crashed on top of Lee. Lee shook his head. You gotta let the hill tell you where to roll. Rookie mistake, Poe said as he started to walk back up the hill. Lee stopped Poe before he went any farther. Then he walked over to Dim and Sum, who were standing next to two bamboo trees with a hammock hung between them. Dim, Sum, let's show him how we go uphill, Lee instructed. Dim and Sum backed up into the hammock, and then Lee pulled back on the trees and released. Boing! The hammock launched them into the air. They flew all the way up the hill and landed in the grass. Woo! They cheered as they flew. Poe watched them admiringly. It's beautiful. Poe ran to the catapult and copied what his cousins had done. He went flying up the hill over Mr. Ping's head. Still trying to entice Poe, Mr. Ping had whipped up some crispy tofu for a snack. Snack time, he called out cheerfully. Then he noticed Poe, airborne above him. I may never walk again, Poe crowed. That's what I'm afraid of, said Mr. Ping. Poe crashed into his cousins, who had landed perfectly, as they were splayed out in lounge chairs on top of the hill. Mr. Ping winced. He shook his head as Poe rolled down another hill. Just let yourself fall into it, Lee instructed Poe, who was back at the top of the hill again. Poe took a deep breath and tried to relax as best as he could. Then he closed his eyes and tried to roll, but instead he fell backward, head first into a rock. And then another, and another. Eventually, he rolled right into Mei Mei, who was practicing her ribbon dancing. The two ended up tangled together in the ribbons. Subtle, Poe, Mei Mei said, locking eyes with him. Very subtle, Poe blushed. Let me get some of that, said Big Fun, who ran over and picked both of them up in a huge hug. Once he managed to free himself, Poe catapulted himself back uphill to try again. This time, as Poe rolled, he picked up speed and snow 
turning into a panda snowball. But Poe couldn't see where he was going. What are you guys looking at? One of the pandas asked as he walked past Lee and the others at the bottom of the hill, a chair and umbrella in hand. Boom! Poe collided with him. Snow exploded everywhere, and Poe went flying into the nearby hot spring. Yahoo! Poe shouted, landing perfectly in the pool chair. The umbrella opened right above him. Lee laughed, beaming a proud smile. That's how we roll, cannonball, he cried, jumping into the spring. The other pandas cheered and followed him into the water. Even Grandma Panda on her bamboo raft. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Meanwhile, Mr. Ping was sad as he returned to the village cooking hut. He had been working so hard, making all of Poe's favorite dishes. Poe wasn't even interested. Poe never said no to his dumplings. Never. Ever since Lee had come to the Valley of Peace, Mr. Ping had worried that he would lose Poe. Now it looked like that might happen. Mr. Ping would be left all alone. No more Poe. No more cuddly panda son. When he entered the hut, his eyes grew wide. He had prepared a whole feast for Poe. Radish noodles, tofu noodles, scallion noodles. And the table was crawling with pandas. Bao, Lele, and the baby pandas were eating everything in sight. What are you doing here? Mr. Ping asked. Food is for Poe. He rushed around the hut, trying to shoo away the baby pandas. One was shoveling dumplings into his mouth from a big bowl. Another was reaching a curious hand toward the cooking fire. And Mr. Ping scooped him up under a wing and whisked him away. Bao tossed a baby panda into a pot. Throw it in, he cried. Get out of there! No! Mr. Ping shouted. Then he noticed a bowl of noodles rapidly disappearing. His leg got wrapped around the long noodle from the bowl. It dragged him all around the hut, winding around all the baby pandas. Ah, my noodles. Leave my noodles alone. He finally managed to grab the noodle and stop it. With another hand, he grabbed his hat. He didn't realize that it was inside a baby panda's mouth. No, 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 not for you, Mr. Ping scolded. The panda opened his mouth, and the hat shot out, slamming into Mr. Ping. He went flying across the hut and landed next to Bao, who was slurping up the long noodle. We love noodles, said Bao. Mr. Ping gasped, just like my Po. Suddenly he softened. He saw all the young pandas in a new light. Maybe he would lose Poe, and maybe he wouldn't. But right now, he had lots of baby pandas to feed. Just like the old days, but with more pandas. Oh, what the heck, Mr. Pink thought as he put out more food. All the little pandas started munching away, and Mr. Pink smiled for the first time in days. Chapter 12 Is This My Mom? That night, Poe and Lee sat on the porch of Lee's hut, looking out at the village below them. Poe gave a deep, contented sigh. How was that? he asked Lee, because sighing contentedly was another panda skill he needed to perfect. Lee held up a finger and then took a deep breath, letting out an even bigger, deeper, more contented sigh than Poe's. Poe was impressed. Whoa. Now you try again, said Lee but don't try so hard. Poe nodded and tried again, finally getting it. It wasn't about how much air you took in or let out. It was about how you felt when you did it. One more time, he sighed. This one was almost as deep and contented as Lee's had been. Much better, Lee said. Poe pumped his fist victoriously. Yes, thanks, Dad. For what? Lee asked. You know, said Poe, for showing me what it feels like to be a panda. So when do you think I'll be ready to master Chi? Soon, real soon. Come on, Lee said. He started to stand up. 
I want to show you something else. Poe followed Lee inside his hut. The floor was strewn with dirty clothes. Sorry about the mess, Lee apologized. I don't usually get visitors. They stepped around the clothes until they reached the front of a small shrine on the far wall. In the center of the shrine was a picture surrounded by lit candles and flowers. A picture of baby Poe in the arms of a female panda. Is this my mom? Poe asked. I had this done on your 100th day, Lee told him, picking up the picture. Your mama couldn't hold you still. You nearly ate the paper, it's true. Poe saw that the corner of the sketch had actually been nibbled on. What was she like? Poe asked. She was the total package, Lee responded, with a far-off look in his eyes. Smart, beautiful, tremendous appetite. She was the love of my life. And then, just when I thought I couldn't get any luckier, along you came. He glanced over at Poe and smiled. I really had it all, he said. Then his face clouded. Until that one moment when I lost everything, his voice trailed off. Even though Poe had been just a baby at the time, he remembered that moment. He dreamed about it, sometimes. The evil Lord Shen had sent his army of wolves to attack Poe's peaceful farming village, far from the safety of the secret village. Lee stayed to fight and told Poe's mother to take Poe to safety. She ran and hid Poe in a crate of vegetables. Poe was found and adopted by Mr. Ping and his mother. His mother was lost forever. Lee's hand trembled as he carefully placed the picture back on the altar. Poe saw how heartbroken his father was, and his own heart broke for Lee. Helmet. Poe stepped closer to his father and put a hand on his shoulder. Dad, you don't ever have to worry about losing me again, Poe promised. He pulled his father into a hug. Lee wrapped his arms around Poe, squeezing him as tightly as he could. Suddenly, Big Fun ran into Lee's hut. Let me get some of that, he said, kicking both of them up into a gigantic hug. Chapter 13 Valley of Warback at the Jade Palace Master Shifu, Tigress, Viper, and Monkey stood in the Garden of Statues, looking out over the valley. Crane and Mantis had not returned, and they were worried. Even more worrisome were all the messages they were receiving from throughout China. Another one flew in, attached to an arrow. Monkey jumped in the air and grabbed it. He landed next to the others, removed the red piece of parchment, and read it. It's from the eastern province, Monkey reported. Master Shifu took the arrow from him and set it in line with the other arrows they had received. Master Lizard, Master Ox, Master Eagle, all of them. In every village, from the sea to here, every master in China has vanished, he said. Maybe they are all at a party? Monkey suggested hopefully. Tigress and Viper looked at Monkey. Monkey, Viper said in a disapproving voice. Monkey shrugged. I didn't get invited either. But they all knew the truth. Even Monkey. Kai has taken their chai, Master Shifu said. We are all that stand between him and the knowledge Ugwe left in our care. He looked at Tigress. The villagers? Evacuated? Done, Master, she replied. Master Shifu paced around the garden. Crane? Mantis? Still nothing, Tigress reported. Then Viper cried out, Wait, it's them. They could see the silhouette of Crane high in the sky, with the tiny mantis perched on his back. But as the warriors got closer, they saw that they were both green and glowing. Master Shifu's heart sank. No, 
Jade Crane dive-bombed them, and the four warriors ducked just in time to avoid him. Jade Mantis leaped off Jade Crane's back, and they both landed in the middle of the statue garden. Behind them, through the smoke, Kai himself appeared. He marched forward past the two zombies. Master Shifu's eyes narrowed. Kai. Kai's entire body was glowing with incredible chi as he looked up at Ugwe's statue. Master Shifu and the rest of the Furious Five blocked his path. Nice. Very tacky, Kai remarked. How dare you set foot on these grounds, Master Shifu said angrily. Kai snorted. Look at you pathetic fools, groveling at the feet of Ugwe. You are not fit to speak his name, Tigress said, her eyes like two burning coals as she glared at him. I am not fit, little kitten, Kai asked. I fought by his side. I loved him like a brother, and he betrayed me. Well now, I will destroy everything he has created. He hurled his chain blades at them. Go, Master Shifu yelled. Monkey, Viper, and Tigress jumped out of the way just in time. Kai's chains, like huge, angry snakes with minds of their own. Monkey jumped and leaped over the chains. Viper moved so quickly, she was a flash in the air. Tigress bounded at Kai, delivering a brutal blow that knocked him to the ground. How's that for a little kitten? she asked. Kai's eyes glowed green with rage. Behind him, Jade Crane and Jade Mantis jumped into the battle. Jade Crane flew into Tigress, knocking her off Kai. Master Shifu jumped in and unleashed a furious attack. I will not let you destroy Ugwe's memory, he yelled. Why not? Kai asked, blocking a blow from Master Shifu. He destroyed mine. While Master Shifu and Kai battled, Monkey managed to catch Jade Mantis in his hands. Mantis, it is me, your bestie, Monkey said. But Jade Mantis was completely under Kai's control. He used his amazing kung fu strength to fling Monkey back and forth, pummeling Tigress. Sorry, Tigress, Monkey apologized as the two collided. And then they collided again. Sorry, and again. Sorry. Master Shifu jumped up to deliver a right heel kick to Kai, and then froze in midair. He had spotted the Ugwe amulet around Kai's neck. Kai used the moment of weakness to send Master Shifu flying into a stone wall. Tigress ran after him. Kai held out his hand, pointing at Jade Crane and Jade Mantis. Bring them to me, he commanded. Jade Crane dragged Viper behind him, and Jade Mantis dragged Monkey. Neither of them could escape from the grasp of the Jade Masters. Tigress and Master Shifu watched in horror as Kai sucked the chai from Viper and Monkey. They both shrank and turned into Jade Amulets. Tigress moved to attack Kai, but Master Shifu held her back. No! You must warn Po! he told her. Kai lashed his chains around the Ugwe statue sending Tigress and Master Shifu flying backward. I will show you the true power of Chai, brother, he said. Yeah. With a mighty pull, he ripped the statue from the ground. No, Master Shifu cried. Kai swung the statue around and smashed it right through the Jade Palace, carving through the scroll room. Then he let go. Ugwe's statue flew off the mountain, and the scrolls, centuries of wisdom, were scattered by the wind. The statue fell from the steps, shattering in the valley below. Master Shifu sank to his knees in despair. So much knowledge. Lost. Ugwe, forgive me, he said. The sound of Kai's mocking laughter look up. Kai grabbed Ugwe's amulet. Hmm. What do you say, Ugwe? Do you forgive him? You may have destroyed the Jade Palace, but you will never succeed, Master Shifu said. There will always be someone to stop you. Who? The panda? Kai asked. His chi is strong. 
but it won't be enough. He will meet the same fate as you. No, Master Shifu cried. And so will every panda in that village, I said. Kai shot out his hand, sucking in Master Shifu's chi. Master Shifu shrunk into a jade amulet. Tigress gasped in horror. Oh, I hope you're ready, she whispered. Tigress glanced down to see the scroll with Ugwe's story at her feet. What luck. Now she could find Poe. She only hoped she would find him before Kai did. Chapter 14 The Truth Revealed That night, Poe looked out at the sea of pandas before him. A huge festival was taking place, and everyone was dancing and celebrating. Poe chatted with his new friends contentedly. He finally felt like he was one of them, a true panda. But as Poe made his way through the village, he came upon a wilted flower in the ground. He took a deep breath and tried to use the same chi move he'd seen Shifu do. Just then, Poe spotted a familiar figure climbing over the cliff wall at the edge of the village. Tigress, he called after her. At the sound of Poe's voice, the music died down and the pandas gathered round. Poe made his way over to Tigress. She looked exhausted and worried. Who is she? Mei Mei asked Poe. Lei Lei looked from the action figure in her hand, Tigress. Her eyes lit up. Big, stripy baby, she cried happily. She ran to Tigress and clung to her leg. What are you doing here? Poe asked Tigress. Kai attacked the valley, she replied. He's taken every master in China, including Shifu and the others. It's all gone, Poe. Everything. Everyone. Her voice trailed off and she looked away. Everyone? Poe asked. Tigress nodded. Everyone, she said, and Poe let the weight of that sink in. All the pandas got quiet. Then Mr. Ping spoke up. How's my restaurant? He asked. The pandas looked at him, horrified. We'll talk later. And now Kai is on his way here, Tigress continued. He's after you, Poe. He's after all pandas. The shocked pandas gasped. How long do we have? Poe asked. Not long, Tigress replied. Please tell me you've mastered Chi. Poe turned to Lee, who was hurrying through the crowd of pandas, trying to get them in order. Here, take the baby, he said, handing off a cub to its parents. Then he picked up another. Okay, who belongs to this one? Dad, Dad, Poe shouted catching up to him. You need to teach me the secret chi technique now, he said urgently. Lee had a funny, nervous look on his face. No, no, I'm afraid you need more time, he said. He quickly shouted to the pandas, everyone, go get your things. Then he rushed over to a smaller groups of pandas, directing them to get all the food together. Let me hand you that. I don't have more time, Poe argued. I need to learn it now. Lee grabbed a bowl of food from the table. Sorry, you're not ready, he said flatly. Pack everything, he called to the pandas who were already fleeing into their huts. I am ready, Poe said. Not quite, Lee said. Ignoring Poe, he headed toward the bridge leading to his hut. Poe wasn't sure why his dad was acting this way. What are you talking about? He questioned him. I've done everything you've asked. I've mastered napping, sleeping in, hammocks, hot tubs. I am totally at one with my panda parts. Now why won't you show me? Lee continued to ignore Poe and kept walking. Poe grabbed Lee's arm, forcing his dad to face him. Lee gave in. Because I don't know it, he blurted out. Poe was confused. You what? I don't know it, okay? Lee admitted. No one does. Maybe we used to, but not anymore. Poe was stunned. You lied? No, I... Yes, said Lee, looking down. 
Why? O asked. To save your life, he cried. I find out some blade-swinging maniac is coming for you, and I'm supposed to do what? Just let that happen. Yes, Poe said. I'm the dragon warrior. Facing maniacs. That's my job. Because of you, I left the valley unprotected. I left my friends unprotected. And now they're all... They're all... He couldn't say the words. Just thinking of Master Shifu, Viper, Crane, Mantis, and Monkey as little green amulets. It was too horrible. That would have happened to you too, said Lee. I already lost you once. I'm not going to lose you again. I can't. He tried to pull Poe toward the hut, but Poe pushed him away. You just did, he said. Poe walked away from his dad, and Lee stared after him, heartbroken. Chapter 15 A New Plan Lee's orders to evacuate the village had sent the pandas into a panic. They scurried back and forth, not sure of what to pack or where to go. Poe walked through them, determined. Mr. Ping trailed after him. Poe, I'm so worried for you that I can't even enjoy being right about everything, Mr. Ping said. Now run, 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 as fast as those chubby legs can go. Run? Poe snorted. There's nowhere to run. Mr. Ping knew that stubborn look in his son's eyes. What are you going to do? I'm going to stay and fight that monster. Poe, he may be a monster, but he's still your father, Mr. Ping said. Not him. Kai. Poe pushed past his dad and rushed to the bamboo forest, kicking and punching, breaking the bamboo to bits. He used the broken parts to piece together a training dummy shaped like Kai. Poe went into his old training routine, dodging, kicking, punching, jumping. Mr. Ping knew this wasn't the way. He left Poe and went to Lee's hut, where he found Lee staring at a picture of his wife holding baby Poe. Hungry? Mr. Ping asked, holding out a bowl of dumplings. Not really, Lee said. For later, then, Mr. Ping said. He handed the bowl to Lee. You know, you weren't the only one who was lying, he said. Lee raised a furry eyebrow. Oh? Mr. Ping took a deep breath. I didn't really come along, because I was worried Poe would go hungry. I was worried about you, he confessed. Lee was confused, worried that I'd go hungry. No, Mr. Ping corrected him. I was worried you'd steal Poe from me. Now, Lee was shocked. What? Mr. Ping looked away, embarrassed. I know. That was crazy, said Mr. Ping. But I realized having you in Poe's life doesn't mean less for me. It means more for Poe. Lee thought about this. Mr. Ping was right. But what did it matter now? Well, I'm not in his life, he pointed out. Not anymore. Your son got mad at you. Welcome to parenthood. I lied to him. He'll never forgive me. I lied to him for 20 years. He still thinks he came from an egg. Sometimes we do the wrong things for the right reasons. Mr. Ping unfolded a piece of paper, placing it next to the picture of Poe and his mom. Look, he's hurt. He's confused. And he still has to save the world, Mr. Ping told him. He needs both his dads. Mr. Ping turned and walked out, and Lee looked back at the paper he had left. It was the sketch of Poe, Lee, and Mr. Ping from the restaurant. Poe did need them, and he wasn't going to give up on Poe. He just had to hope that Poe hadn't totally given up on him. Poe was still punching furiously at the training dummy when Tigress blocked his fist mid-punch. This isn't going to work, she said. It has to, Poe replied, winded. You're not thinking straight. I am. You're not, she argued back. As they bickered, they began to spar. I've seen Kai. I've seen what he can do, Tigress said. 
blocking another punch from Poe. But he hasn't seen what I can do, Poe said, flipping over. He held Tigress's paw in a familiar pose. Tigress gasped. The Wuxi finger hold? It's my best move, Poe replied. I just have to get Kai, grab his finger, and then, skadoosh, back to the spirit realm. Tigress broke his hold. He has an army of jade creatures. They see everything he sees, so there's no sneaking up on him. You will never get close enough. It's gonna work, Wu cried. She dodged a kick from him. He can only be stopped by a master of chi. Oh, you sound just like Shifu with the chi-chi-chi, Po shouted, throwing another exhausted punch. Chi this, chi that, chi-chi-chi-chi. I'm not a master of chi, okay? I don't know if I'm the dragon warrior. Poe breathed in shakily. I don't even know if I'm a panda. I don't know who I am. His voice dropped to a whisper and he collapsed in a heap. You're right. There's no way I can stop him. Lee emerged from the fog, breaking the silence. Unless you had an army of your own. You? Poe asked. Not just me, Lee said. Us, said Mr. Ping by Lee's side. All of us, Lee said. All of the pandas from the village emerged from the fog. I finally found my son after all these years. It's going to take a lot more than the end of the world to keep us apart. Poe sighed. But you don't even know Kung Fu. Then you will teach us, Lee said. What? I can't teach you Kung Fu. I couldn't even teach Tigress, and she already knows Kung Fu. Lee came closer to his son. Poe, I know I'm the last guy you want to trust right now. But you gotta believe me. We can do this. We can learn Kung Fu. We can be just like you. Poe's eyes lit up. He looked around at all the pandas as an idea started to take hold. What did you just say? He asked. We can do this? Lee ventured. No. We can learn Kung Fu? After that? We can be just like you? Lee said, his voice rising. Yes, Poe cried. We can? No, you can't. Poe burst into laughter. The pandas around him thought he'd finally lost it. But you don't have to be. That's what Shifu meant. I don't have to turn you into me. I have to turn you into you. Mr. Ping shook his head. That doesn't make any sense. Poe wrapped his two dads in a huge hug. I know. Poe laughed. Thanks, dads. You're welcome, Ping and Lee chorused. I'm going to do something I never thought I'd be Bele to do. I'm going to teach Kung Fu. Chapter 16 Poe's Turn to Teach The next morning, Poe gathered all of the pandas in a wide field by the waterfall. He had spent all night thinking about his own Kung Fu training. The field was the perfect location for the exercises he had in mind. Poe put his hands behind his back as he addressed the students. You guys, your real strength comes from being the best you you can be. So who are you? What are you good at? What do you love? What makes you you? He broke the pandas out into smaller groups. He watched Bao play Jansi, and he studied Mei Mei as she twirled her ribbons. He even watched Big Fun use the hammocks to catapult Dim and Sum up the hills. Tigress followed him from group to group, but she had no idea what he was doing. Once Poe had figured out what each panda was best at, he had them do it over and over. He asked Bao and all his friends to play a marathon game of Jonesy. Yes, good, good, again, he called to them. He asked another group of pandas to roll downhill, and he had big fun practice hugging a log. Hug that log, you, he shouted encouragingly. Hug that log like it's the last time you're ever going to hug it goodbye forever. As Mei Mei danced with her ribbons, he called, Faster, faster, twirl those ribbons. 
Dim and some were off to the side, catapulting themselves with the hammocks. Higher, Poe said, and a little more to the left this time. You can do it. Then Poe took a basket full of dumplings to bow and the kid pandas. I don't want to see any of these hit the ground, he coached, before tossing the dumplings into the air. The kids kicked the dumplings just like they'd kicked the Johnsy. Outside the kitchen hut, Lee and Mr. Ping were transforming kitchen supplies into weapons and armor. Tigress walked around, still trying to figure out what Poe had in mind. Lele followed her everywhere. Wait, wait, strippy baby, she cried. As Poe studied the pandas, he gave them each a different weapon. He handed Mei Mei some nunchucks, two sticks attached by a chain, a weapon used in kung fu fighting. Then he took away her ribbons. Good, now try it with these, he said. Mei Mei twirled them expertly, though she accidentally hit Tigress in the process. Then he inserted firecrackers into the dumplings the kids were kicking. The final test. Poe held up a board for each of the pandas to break. Bao kicked a dumpling clean through the board. Big Fun hugged the board until it splintered to pieces. Even Grandma Panda was willing to take a swing at it. But she missed and kicked Poe in his tenders. By the end of the day, every panda in the village was turning their own panda skills into awesome battle skills, even though it still looked like they were playing and having fun. Poe stood on a hill to watch them all in action. Tigress hobbled over, Lele clinging to her leg. They are ready, Poe said confidently. Her golden eyes widened. What? What? 